Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> How's everyone doing this great day? Beautiful weekend. Cooling off though, I think. Anyways, uh, let's start with a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, so much for this time to get to look in your word as we continue to study your word and this great briefing you gave your disciples in the Oliver Discourse. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. It gives us such insight into the days ahead. We praise you and thank you so much. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, Olivet Discourse continues. I think we're down to two days, today and tomorrow. Uh, this is the, the, the fourth of the, I mean, this is the fifth of the parables, and then we got the judgment on the Gentiles, uh, which will be tomorrow. And that's the, uh, what everyone uh, is uh, commonly referred to as the sheep and goat judgment which is a little different kind of judgment uh, the more I've been studying it. Because uh, it's kind of fascinating, the criteria for that judgment. So that's why I think it fits into these, the second half of the tribulation. Uh, it has to do with how people are helping one another. Uh, so we'll look at that uh, tomorrow. Fascinating uh, judgment. And for many years, I didn't really know what it meant. And now that I get a little bit better idea of what it, uh, what Jesus is trying to say there, because it's not the church is already in heaven, so it had, it couldn't it couldn't address it couldn't be a church age kind of a judgment. Uh, so it was rather interesting, uh, and it, it it applies it seems to me to only uh, believers and unbelievers uh, like the rest of these have been, but the believers in this case. Uh, have to meet a certain criteria too that they didn't take the mark of the beast. And so, nope, oh, didn't mean to do that. Uh, so let's uh, get into the word here. And did I pray already? No, I can't remember if I prayed. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much uh, for this time. We get to look into your word. And uh, yes, we did play, uh, Lord. And uh, I think my memory's going, Lord. I need some help with that. But I pray, but praise you and thank you so much. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, I got two prayers in there. <laughs> and as I get talking, I forget where, where I'm at in my uh, in my, time, my my system here. So let's move over and get uh, continue with the same picture. Uh, this uh, this whole briefing is happening up on the Mount of Olives, and uh, I won't bother getting the cursor today. We don't have to point anything out. If you can see my cursor, but you can see the Temple Mount over across the way there, and so this looks like a nice grassy area up on the Mount of Olives. So uh, that the the Dome of the Rock wasn't there obviously when Jesus was. The Temple was there, and so I'm sure that. Uh, uh, at the time that uh, <clears throat> that uh, Jesus was uh, watching, uh, he could see the temple uh, from this area. That's why I picked the picture. So let's get into the verses. So again, the point of this parable is to re-emphasize in, uh, in an extended way the necessity to keep laboring, to keep working for the Lord while watching and waiting. Again, the distinction is not between different kinds of believers, but between believers and unbelievers. The believers are servants who will be laboring, keep on laboring while they are watching for the Lord's return. But the unbeliever cannot labor in the work of the Lord and therefore will have nothing to show at the time of the Lord's return. Now, Arnold kind of makes this sound like it's, it's during the tribulation, but I think it can apply to even now or the tribulation uh, when it comes to we're, we're still watching. We're watching for the rapture and we should be uh, we should be working also. So I think it's a dual uh, purpose uh, type of a uh, profit of a uh, from that standpoint. So let's start reading here in verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And, and I have a feeling that was going to happen. I don't know why this thing can be really finicky. 
And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his uh, several ability, and straightway took his journey. Might make note of that, uh, of that word, uh, uh, several ability. I think the Lord gives us the, uh, the tools we need to do what he needs us to do. Uh, it used to be an old saying, I never can say it right. There's a really cool way to say it. Uh, but he doesn't choose the cho he doesn't choose uh, the able, but uh, but equips the chosen. Uh, something along that lines. Okay, verse 16. And again, this is Jesus speaking. Jesus is talking this whole time. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them and made another five talents. Let's just kind of mention what I think the symbology of the talent is. Uh, basically, it's whatever Jesus has given you as abilities. <laughs> he may give you abilities in certain areas to do certain things. And he expects you to use those abilities to go in <clears throat> and you, and, uh, for the kingdom of uh, heaven. Now, in this particular parable, we're talking about money and, and they and they got to trade <clears throat> and be able to trade and, get, and gain talents <clears throat> but a talent in that particular time frame was actually <clears throat> money but again it's a parable too so Jesus is using this as an example of something much more spiritual so in this particular case I think it means more like the spreading the word of God so that uh, uh, he gave you like if he gives us the ability to uh, to uh, reach out to others, and we reach out to others, and we re and they and they respond, and they become children of God. Then we've increased. So that's what he means by traded. And some other examples is over in Ephesians five sixteen. Redeem the time because the days are evil. First uh, Timothy four twelve and thirteen. Let no man despise thy youth, but if thou an example of the believers in word and conversation and charity and spirit and faith and purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation and to doctrine. This is uh, Paul was telling Timothy what he should be working on. In 2 Peter uh, 1, 5 through 8. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to your virtual knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For the, if these things be, be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So another thing we can also address here in talking about trading is also learning about the Lord so that you can reach others with that kind of information. Okay, verse 17. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained an, an other two. So now this is the, what the... Uh, but he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. Now this is the, the, the key to this particular parable. And I see this as kind of that he knew about God, uh, but he hid his earth. Uh, he basically, he was ashamed of Jesus and hid... Uh, his his knowledge of the Lord in the ground and didn't share it with others. And some verses that kind of go along with this over in Hebrews 6.12. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. That was 1 Peter 4.10. Okay, back to Matthew 25.19. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckon with them. So talking about reckoning, uh, let's look at Romans 14.10-12. through 12. But why doest thou judge thy brother? Or why do thou set a knot to thy brother? For if we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ... For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. So this is basically what uh, what, the, what Jesus is basically uh, uh, 
adhering to here is now he's going to, the the good shepherd is going to come and expect to, to give an account of what we did with what he gave us and that's basically the beam of seat that we're going to all go in front of when we get to heaven also in first corinthians 3 9 through 17 for we are laborers together with god ye are god's husband hummingry ye are god's building According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builder thereon. But let every man take heed how to be built thereupon. There's another aspect is that as we uh, help uh, fellow uh, young believers in the word, that whatever was, uh, that we be true to the word and not, and not uh, try to change what the word says because we're building upon somebody else's work. We want to make sure that it's all, all biblically uh, uh, oriented. Uh, so that's what he's basically saying here. For other foundation can no man lay than it is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, way, hood, and stubble, uh, wood, hay, and stubble, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So basically, if we do, if we don't, uh, if we lay good works on our uh, on uh, on others when we when we're teaching, when we're when we're uh, when we're evangelizing, when we're talking with others about God, if you're laying good good things like gold, silver, and jewels, that's going to be look good to God. Uh, to Jesus when uh, he evaluates us. But if we do wood, hay, and stubble, it's going to burn up in the fire. That's what that's saying there. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. By the way, none of this has to do with salvation. Uh, I might point that out. Uh, that uh, uh, This is all about rewards. Uh, most, all these people we're talking about here are saved. He shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, he shall God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy. Which temple ye are? Okay, back to Matthew 25, 20. So he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me my two, ta uh, two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. And notice here, that it's what Jesus gave you and what you did with it. It's not necessarily that uh, you did the same thing as somebody else. I think that's what Jesus is trying to point out here. So listen to what Jesus says to the person with two talents. Because Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. So he didn't say anything like, ah, you're, 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 not, you're not quite as good as the other guy. He said the exact same thing. I don't want to point that out. Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. So let's talk about faithful servants uh, just for a second. Uh, a couple of verses on that. Daniel 12, 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. I think it might surprise that our testimony is probably the, the, the key to a lot of this, is that people will recognize it by, your, by the kind of person you are. And so that they'll recognize that and go ahead and, uh, uh, and either be inquisitive of uh, why you are the way you are and be ready to give an answer. Or that, that uh, if they already know that, like for instance, that you're saved and you're a Christian and you, go to, and that you uh, really love the Lord, and they, may, they may seek out the Lord and you may not even know about it. But that's it. That would be a blessing on you when it comes to this day, because it was because of you that that person got saved. I like the famous story uh, talking about the Bema Seed. I love this little story because it really uh, hits home. Remember that up on the cross, 
uh, Jesus, there was a thief next to him, and, and uh, the thief said to Jesus, uh, "Remember me uh, uh, when you come, when you re when you return." And Jesus said that you will be with me in paradise today. So he was he got saved right there next to the cross and died a few hours later. Uh, didn't get baptized. Didn't go out and uh, uh, evangelize. Didn't save a bunch of people. Fast forward. This is, uh, of course, I don't know if this is true or not. But I'll tell you that that particular story has saved thousands, probably millions of people uh, that are on death row or, or uh, are sick in bed or in dying uh, days. Uh, and, they, and, they, and they realize they need the Lord. And this is just uh, so, and so I can imagine that we get to heaven and that uh, that particular thief comes up in front of the Lord. And I can see him saying, Lord, no, I was only saved for a few minutes before I died. I can't see where I would you know, receive any rewards. And Jesus goes, just a minute. And he points to a very large group of people off to the side. And he says, all those people got saved because of your story in the Bible. And so their, their salvation is on you. And so uh, there'd be a lot of weeping over that one, I think. So I, like, I, like, I kind of thought, like that story because I can imagine that happening. Okay, where were we? 1 Corinthians 3.14. So if any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. So in other words, if you built upon something, someone else's, uh, you receive a reward too for building upon somebody else's uh, uh, starting. That's where we get the term planting a seed. I think that uh, you know, every single person uh, that is involved with the process of saving an individual uh, is, gets part of that reward. Also in Psalm 1611. Thou wilt show me the path of life in thy presence of fullness of joy, and thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. John 15, 10. If you keep my commandments, he shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that you might that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. I'm talking about joy of the Lord here. Uh, and also over in Zephaniah 3.17. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. We will serve. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Beyond the verse 24. And he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping what thou hast not sown and gathering what thou hast not strewn. Talk about a hard man. I, I mentioned one verse over in Jude 15. To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them that of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all that had hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. That's more or less the definition here of a hard man. Uh, he's gonna, uh, it's going to be pretty hard on him right now. Uh, so let's move on to verse 25. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, the, there thou hast, that is thine. And his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knowest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not strawed. Talking about wicked over in Matthew 18.32. Uh, uh, Jesus forgave, uh, Though Jesus forgave us of our sins, we did not accept it and did not accept the gift. I think that's what it's basically saying here, is that uh, he had given him the talent. He had given him the word of God, and he hid it in the ground and did nothing with it. He just hid it. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't try to uh, learn about God. He didn't accept the Lord's uh, 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 gift. And so let's look at uh, uh, some verses over in Matthew 18, 32 and 33. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all thy debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldst not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? It's another example of uh, a fact that uh, somebody was given the gift, but uh, didn't, didn't uh, repay that beautiful gift by giving it to others. That's what basically the, the, this verse is saying. Back to Matthew 25, 27. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanges, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. 
you should have did something with it, uh, even if it was just anything. Uh, and that's basically what uh, was saying here, verse 28. Take therefore thy talent from him and give it unto him which have ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from them, him that have hath not shall be taken away, even that which he hath. And this is talking about the eternal life. Uh, he's not going to receive eternal life. It was taken from him because he did nothing with the knowledge of the Lord. That's basically what we're saying here. Some other verses over in Mark 4.24 and 4.25. And he said unto them, Take heed what you hear. With what measure you make, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath, to him shall be given, and he that hath not, from him shall be taken, even that which he hath. Uh, similar verse, and it was also over in John 15, 1 through 6. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye cannot do anything. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness, that we shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Uh, that's basically uh, going to be heading into the uh, eternal fire. So, uh, and speaking of the eternal fire, uh, let's look at uh, Revelation uh, 12, 20 through 15, 20, 12 through 15. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So basically this whole, this whole parable is a... a, a now, now, Dr. Uh, Fuchtenbaum talks about the fact that this parable was is most likely talking about the period of time during the tribulation that we should be, yeah, even those that are, are, are surviving and who are Christians should be doing their very best uh, to be sp still spreading the word of God. They should be working and laboring until that final day. They shouldn't be hiding out in caves and, uh, and they should do it, be doing their best uh, to uh, uh, spread the word of God. And I think that uh, uh, that the ones he's talking about here, particularly the one he's talk uh, that's mentioned in the uh, uh, that uh, hid the talent in the ground, uh, they basically went along with the world. And that uh, and in the case of the tribulation, those will be the people that actually took the mark of the beast. And that uh, there's no way that they're going to be able to survive. Uh, they're, auto, they're taking the market of base automatically condemns you to, uh, to the uh, lake of fire. There's nothing you can do about it. And so those are the people that Jesus was talking about in that latter part. But I also think that this parable can equate to uh, what we should be doing even now as Christians, uh, that we should be working, that we shouldn't be just hanging around, particularly as we think the rapture might be getting close, uh, that we uh, might be a tendency to just kind of sit back and wait for it to come. Uh, but, uh, I know for me and that I would really like to be doing something that the Lord wants me to do that moment of the rapture. Uh, that, that would be an awesome thing to be taken home to the Lord uh, exactly uh, uh, during the rapture when I was doing something for him. And so uh, let's all try to uh, find out what the Lord has for you to do. I'm not going to tell you what that is because I don't know what it is. Uh, everybody is different. 
And uh, I think some people think that you need to be a certain thing. But God's going to give you the tools you need to be whatever he needs you to be working on. So pray about it and really be uh, diligent in trying to figure out what the Lord wants you to do and what he's going to make you good at. And so, uh, you know, it might be something as simple as uh, uh, you know, doing a Sunday school class or maybe running a bus route, uh, picking up kids to get them to bring them to Sunday school or just even even vacuuming the church once a week, making it looking great and uh, and looking and awesome uh, for those people to feel welcome coming into our uh, congregation. So you know you can't live with uh, you only need. You know some people say, well maybe I need to be a pastor or I need to be an evangelist, uh, and uh, not necessarily. Uh, if everybody was a pastor, there would be no congregation. Uh, if everybody was an evangelist, uh, then we wouldn't have any pastors. We wouldn't have any local churches. So we got to find out what the Lord has for you. And so, uh, and the hunt is the enjoyable part. So again, and, and the whole point behind these five was to be watchful and to be ready and laboring in the work of the Lord. And so that, uh, and I know that uh, I'm looking forward to that day, but I'm going to keep working. Uh, what I think he's told me to do is teach. And so I'm enjoying that. I also try to help out any, you know, along with the, the computer stuff and stuff like that. So I feel that's where the Lord has led me, uh, not necessarily for you. So uh, let's pray. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, I want to give you praise and thanks for all the things that you do for me. And, that, and, that, and at any point, Lord, that uh, you need me to move in a different direction, no matter what it is. Uh, please help me to know what that is. And help all those that are listening to uh, to find what you have in store for them and that you can uh, equip them, and that you can uh, help them to do whatever it, it, it is that you need them to do. And we give you praise and thanks. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And I might point out there's even, a, I, I believe, a training period. Uh, I did a, uh, I didn't really know that this was the way he was heading me, but I know I felt very driven over the last, oh, five, ten years to really study the Bible. And so that's what I've been kind of doing. And when I look back, I realize that the Lord was probably prepping me to be a little bit better teacher uh, by uh, by uh, spending my time studying certain parts of the Bible. And so that's what I've done. And I've, I listened to a lot of commentaries. I was a, uh, uh, I used to drive a lot. So I had a lot of great opportunity to listen to tapes. So I spent uh, all my hours driving, listening to, to Bible tapes, uh, commentaries by different uh different uh, uh, theologians. Uh, a couple of my favorites was Chuck Missler. And uh, I've listened to a lot of the uh, the old uh, patriarchs of the Bible. Uh, Chuck Missler, let me see who else. Uh, uh, Tim LaHaye. Uh, a few other pastors I really enjoy listening to because they have uh, tapes out there. Uh, there was another pastor. Uh, he's gone home to be with the Lord now, but... Uh, can't think of his name right now. He had a radio program out of Oklahoma. Really enjoyed him. He he was really detailed oriented when it came to studying the Bible. But anyway, so you get the general idea. And so whatever you feel drawn to is probably where the Lord is leading you. So that's all I had for today. And uh, I will uh, uh, tomorrow we'll uh, we'll head in and look at that uh, that uh, judgment. So have a great evening, a great day. I mean, uh, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow.